Here on the table, we've got two CPUs with bent pins, and I got these sent in from a viewer that said that they uh, dropped them when they got them. And so they said, look, would you be interested in bending these back? And if you manage to salvage both of them, send us one back my way. And I said, sure thing, we've got a deal because in late 2019, I've got the tech yes method of bending Ryzen pins back down pat to the point where I'm pretty confident that I can bend back any CPU without uh, snapping the pins off. So basically with Ryzen CPUs, you've got what's known as PGA, and that's where the pins come out of the CPU. So as opposed to an Intel socket, that's where they've got LGA, that's where the pins are on the motherboard. I usually use a toothpick to bend those back, and I find that they're actually more flimsier and they're not as solid as the PGA pins are on the Ryzen CPUs. So I have done this in the past. If you wanna see me bend back LGA pins, I'll put a link to a video up here up the top, but we're focusing on Ryzen CPUs. And one thing I will say about the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs versus the 2000 and 1000 series CPUs is that the pins are now thinner and that makes them more susceptible to bending easier. So I think for me personally, I've only ever bent pins once, and this was on this 3900X right here. I've only ever bent the pins once on a Ryzen CPU myself. And how I did it was I had the Wraith Prism cooler on and there was just no room to wiggle and uh, take the cooler off. So generally when you take a cooler off a Ryzen CPU, you should do what's called the wiggle and then your cooler should come off relatively easy. If you don't wiggle it, then you risk uh, pretty much pulling out the whole CPU out of the socket with the cooler, and that's how I bent my pins. Mind you, with the Wraith Prism, the problem is, and a critiquing of that cooler, was that there was actually no room to wiggle the cooler. I only had one way to go, and that was pull it straight out. Though, that aside, we've got here three screwdrivers, and you'll notice that I put three here for size comparisons. I don't use these two screwdrivers. I only use this really thin screwdriver right here. And now I don't use a toothpick because I feel like it doesn't have enough strength and it doesn't give you enough uh, grip and control. This right here is absolutely perfect. And I'll put up the uh, millimeter and what size this screwdriver is. So if you guys want to attempt to do what I do, then this is perfect in my opinion. And it just gives you the control to bend these pins back. And what we've got here, we'll zoom in on this CPU. What we've got right here, you can see that it's got quite a few bent pins because the person who sent them over, uh, they dropped both these CPUs as they were handling them. So that is an obvious way to damage Ryzen pins. So when you uh, handle them, do be very careful not to drop them. And so I guess that's the second uh, biggest or easiest way that you can bend pins on a Ryzen CPU. Though whatever the cause, let's get into bending them back where I will caution that you generally want to do it in one go and have the pins relatively straight from both angles. So look at it from one side angle and then look at it from another side angle when you're bending the pin back so you can get it as straight as possible. Now, you don't have to get it perfectly straight, just get it as straight as possible because we'll talk about how you can get this CPU to work once the pins are bent back. Though do keep in mind, you do not, and I stress this, do not want to snap the pins off. If you go down that route, you're going to be costing yourself a lot of extra headaches. But let's get our screwdrivers and get straight into it.
All right, this is uh, Dr. B coming in here. Looks like our little first patient is looking like he's responded well to the surgery. So we're gonna put him in now into our X570 motherboard and then just boot it up and see if we get a signal. And if we do, then we can get onto the next uh, CPU, try and fix that. And after that, we can talk about some of the extra little pressure points and things to mention. But you can see already with the screwdriver method that we've got so much control and that's what it's all about. We're not over bending a pin back one way or bending it forward one way. We're just taking our time and really just sort of hammering this in, not, not hammering it in, sorry. I mean like we're just putting it on the base of the PCB and then we've got control over bending it any direction we want. And we've also got the actual edge on the screwdriver tip to sort of slot in between two pins to sort of create wedge a break where you may end up if one pins bend back long enough, you may end up bending the pin before it back a little bit, but at the same time, we're still gonna salvage that, bend it back, and then we can bend the one back behind it back to normal. But anyway, let's first put this to the test and see if it works. Otherwise, it'll be all for nothing. So we've got the first CPU working now, but you'll see initially I couldn't actually fit this into the socket. So there was still uh, one pin at this corner that still wasn't uh, close to being straight enough to just slot it in properly. So the socket will now slot it in, that's not a problem. But what we're looking at um, ultimately with doing this is finding out the pressure. If you're gonna slot this in the socket, find out where the pressure point is and where it's not going in around that. So you would have seen my finger on this top corner here. I could feel that's where the pressure was that was stopping it from going in. So obviously there was still a bent pin up in this corner. Well, not bent, but like not straight enough to go into the socket. But speaking of that, we've now got a fixed uh, 2700X that otherwise wouldn't have been fixed. Let's get on to the next one. And so there it is with Ryzen pins and bending them back. It is, once you get experience doing it, it is quite easy. Just remember to always have control. And this is the only tool that I use for the job. As you saw in this video, I just smoked through it and got those pins bent back to a good enough level where the first time around we did have to do a little bit of re-bending because it wouldn't fit in the socket. But ultimately once it really closes into the socket and fits in perfectly, you are talking a working CPU, absolutely fine. Now, one thing of course to be careful of is do not uh, break the pins. So again, on that point of control, use the screwdriver 
and have control with it to maneuver and get the pins back to straight. Do not overexert and bend the pin too far the other way because then it's going to snap off. And so at the end of it all, we've got two working CPUs that I'm stoked about. There it is guys, that's all there is to it. Little really small screwdriver. I will stress again, these two, I cannot bend pins back with these two. It's only this really small one that I use and it just gets the job done perfectly. So that's really all there is to it. Take your time, um, have control. And once you get sort of the method of using the tool to really edge in and bend things back on both horizontal and vertical angles, then you're going to have an absolutely easy time bending those pins back. And you can even help out your friends in the local area or on community forums. The possibilities are endless. But speaking of possibilities, we have the question of the day, and this comes from Spendry1977. And they ask, is it worth going to this from an 8GB RX 480? And they're talking about the 5500 XT review that we did yesterday. And I think, no, not for an RX 480 8GB. Uh, me personally, with the 5500 XT, I'm still waiting to see maybe in, say, two weeks' time if some driver updates increase that performance just a little bit more. I also wanna get my hands on a retail four gigabyte sample before I pass judgment. Uh, I do agree with a lot of people saying that if it came down roughly $20, I think it'd be in a good segment. And that's how competitive this price segment is getting at the moment. But as it stands for me making personal recommendations, even after the 5500 XT review, I'm on the fence of at the moment, go with a budget RX 474 gigabyte. There's such good value for money. Or of course, just save all that extra money and go for a 1660 Super. I feel like these two cards really hit home for value for money at the moment. One being a used card, one being a new card if you want all that warranty and just wanna go with the latest and greatest. I feel like the 5500 XT is definitely coming into a tough market and I feel like it's stuck in a hard place between the used market and the new 1660 Super, which did when that dropped that hit really hard. If you haven't checked out that review, I'll put it up here where I was pretty impressed by that card. Anyway guys, hope that answers your questions. And if you have any more questions about bending pins back or anything else, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And if you've watched this far and you're still watching and you're enjoying the thunderstorm outside and the content too, don't forget to hit that sub and ring the bell. And I'll see you in the next tech video very soon. So stay tuned. Peace out for now. Bye.